Okay, let's take a look at forces and weight. Particularly, we're going to be talking about how to calculate the weight of an object using uh, Newton's second law. Let's take just for instance this car right here. And if we look at this car, we know that it has a mass of 2,000 kilograms and there is an acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. So you have a force, some unknown force, pushing on the car. The mass of the car is 2,000 kilograms, and the car is accelerating at 3.0 meters per second squared. That means that you push on the mass, the car is going to speed up in this case. So let's go ahead and use the equation from Newton's second law to calculate the force that's acting on the car to accelerate it forward at 3 meters per second squared. And we've done this before. It's a pretty simple problem. We just use force equals mass times acceleration. That means that the force is mass, 2,000 kilograms, times the acceleration, which is 3 meters per second squared. And we wind up with a force of 2,000 times 3, that's going to be 6,000, and that's going to work out to newtons. Now, don't forget that a kilogram meter per second squared is the same as a newton. So rather than saying 6,000 kilogram meters per second squared, kilogram meters per second squared, we can say 6,000 newtons. So the force that the tires are applying to the road that moves the car forward, that pushes on the car to the right, to cause that 2,000 kilogram mass to accelerate at 3.0 meters per second squared is 6,000 newtons. Now, the other thing that you'll need to remember is that if the whatever the acceleration's direction is, that is also the direction of the net force. We talked about that before. So the net force, 6,000 newtons, is acting from left to right on this car, causing a positive acceleration of 3 meters per second squared. Force equals mass times acceleration. A force acting on a mass, in this case 2,000 kilograms, will cause that mass to accelerate in the direction of the force. Well, that's the same type of problem we worked using with using forces before. This time, let's take a look at a different situation. Let's figure out what the weight of the car is. And to use the equation from Newton's second law to calculate weight, we're going to change it just a little bit. That equation is going to become force of weight equals mass times acceleration, yes. But it's a special acceleration because we're talking about the car sitting on the surface of the Earth. So we're going to use the acceleration due to gravity. So the weight of the car is the mass of the car 2,000 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.80 meters per second squared. And if we think about that, I'm just going to round that off to 10. It's close enough. 10 times 2,000 gives us 20,000 and that's going to be newtons. So, the force of weight, the weight of the car, the pull of gravity acting downward on the car, the pull of gravity acting down on the car is equal to 20,000 newtons. That's the weight. The weight, remember, is not the same in this case as the force that causes the acceleration of the car. And another thing that you can note is that these two forces, the accelerating force and the weight, are perpendicular to each other, so they literally have no effect on each other. These two vectors are said to be independent of each other. All right, now let's take the next step. Here's our equation for finding weight. From Newton's second law, force of weight equals mass times gravity. And on the Earth, remember that gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, and that varies slightly depending on where you are on the surface of the Earth. If you're at the equator, it's a little bit less. If you're at the pole, 
It's a little bit more because you're closer to the center of mass of the Earth if you're at the pole. We talked about that in a previous video. If you don't remember it, go back and look at it. Uh, here's that magic triangle we talked about before that we can use to rearrange an equation like this to solve for any of the variables depending on whatever variable we're given in a problem. So let's look at a situation. If we put this equation into the triangle, we can say that force of weight equals mass times gravity, or force of weight equals mass times gravity. Remember that that vertical line means multiplication, and this horizontal line is division. So depending on which variable we're given in a particular situation, in a particular problem, we can calculate the weight force of weight equals mass times gravity, or we could calculate the mass if we know the force of weight and the gravity. Mass equals force of weight divided by gravity, and in some situations we might even want to calculate what the acceleration due to gravity is. Remember, see this box right here? That box could be sitting on the Earth, it could be sitting on the Moon, it could be sitting on Pluto, it could be sitting anywhere. Its mass will always be the same, but its weight will be different because the gravity will be different in different places. So we're going to work three very simple problems dealing with a problem where we have to find weight, where we have to find mass, and where we have to find gravity, given three different situations. In the first situation, we're going to give this box, I'm just going to pick this off the top of my head, I going to give it a, a mass of 2 kilograms. That's this mass. Mass equals 2 kilograms. And we're going to use that to calculate the weight of the box. And we can use that, that equation that uh, came from Newton's second law, force of weight equals mass times gravity. Plug in the numbers here. Mass, I gave it 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. And you know, since I only have one significant digit here, I'm going to go ahead and round that off to 10. So that becomes 10 meters per second squared. So 10 times 2 gives us a weight of 20 kilogram meters per second squared. Don't forget that a kilogram meter per second squared is a newton. So we can say that the force of weight is 20 newtons. So in this problem, mass times the acceleration due to gravity, the pulling of gravity tries to accelerate this box downward, accelerating it at 9.8 meters per second squared downward. That force in the direction of that acceleration is 20 newtons. That's the weight of the box. Okay, let's take a look at another situation. Here we're going to calculate the mass of a box. And uh, I'm going to have to put some numbers in here and just to just to give us something to work with I'm gonna give this box I'm gonna give it a weight of well let's say 10 newtons so the force of weight is 10 newtons and we're asked in a problem to calculate the mass of the box so we can set up a new problem mass equals force of weight divided by acceleration due to gravity. Let me say that again. Watch carefully. Mass equals force of weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity. That's our new equation. Mass equals force of weight divided by acceleration due to gravity. And again, we can just plug in some numbers now. The force of weight that I I gave you that the force of the box had a weight of 10 newtons. That's 10 newtons. Force of weight divided by the acceleration due to gravity. And the acceleration due to gravity, we're going to assume that this box is sitting on the Earth. I haven't told you any different. So the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. And, and again, we only have one significant digit. And if you don't understand significant digits, I'm going to do a little video on significant digits. I'll put it at the top of that list of videos. And that should be up probably within the next couple of days. But since we only have one significant digit here, I'm going to go ahead and round that off to 10 meters per second squared. 
So 10 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared is going to give it a mass of 1 kilogram. And you know it's a kilogram because that newton is actually, remember, a kilogram meter per second squared. So kilograms are going to be left over. Uh, meters per second squared are going to factor out, leaving kilograms. So remember that that newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. The newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. Watch like this. The newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. We're going to factor out the second meter per second squared. That leaves kilograms. And that's how we get that kilogram in our answer. All right. Now let's take a look at a third problem. In this problem, well, we're going to assume that the box is not sitting on the earth. We don't know where it's sitting, but it's not sitting on the earth maybe, we're going to calculate the gravity, acceleration due to gravity, that's acting on that box. Well, I'm going to have to give the box a couple of, of uh, numbers here. I'm going to have to give it a, I'm going to give it a mass of two kilograms just to keep nice little clean little numbers here. So the mass of the box is two kilograms. I just made that up. And I'm going to give it a weight of, let's give it a weight of 4 newtons, just to keep problems simple. Let's go ahead and calculate the acceleration due to gravity. Now the real important thing here is how you rearrange the equation. If we come over here to the triangle, the magic triangle, the acceleration due to gravity is equal to the force of weight divided by the mass. So we can write that down. That is, gravity equals force of weight divided by the mass. Gravity equals force of weight divided by the mass. So we can just plug some numbers in here now. And we have force of weight. I gave it a weight of 4 newtons. And I gave it a mass. And the mass here was 2 kilograms. Four divided by two is two. And the unit, well, let's go ahead and figure out what the unit is. Remember that that Newton is really a kilogram meter per second squared. And the kilogram is going to factor out of that, so it's going to leave meters per second squared. And we can bring that down here. Remember that the answer is no good without the unit. So the acceleration due to gravity that this box is experiencing wherever it is, is only 2 meters per second squared. It's not the moon because the acceleration due to gravity on the moon is 1.66 meters per second squared. And this happens to be 2 meters per second squared. So, there are three ways to use that weight equation. You can calculate weight, you can calculate mass, you can calculate gravity. Force of weight equals mass times gravity. Here we calculated force of weight equals mass times gravity. We calculated that the weight of the box was 20 newtons. We calculated mass in the second problem. Mass equals force of weight divided by gravity. Force of weight divided by gravity. Plug some numbers in. We got one kilogram. Don't forget to cancel out units as necessary. In this case, meters per second canceled out and left kilograms. That's what we brought down. And then rem remember in the third problem, we solve that for the acceleration due to gravity and you probably will wind up with problems like this uh, simply because we have to talk about objects and what they weigh on maybe other planets because this is the space age. So let's see we have force of weight divided by mass that was 4 newtons divided by 2 kilograms it gave us 2 meters per second squared remember again where the meters per second squared came from kilograms factored out of that newton, the newton being a kilogram meter per second squared, that factored out that kilogram and left meters per second squared. So there are any three different there are three different ways we can solve those problems. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, drop a tweet or an email and I'll be more than happy to uh, go over it with you.